I can't stand these shows where they just have characters they shit on for no reason because, ha, ah, they're supposed to shit on them. And I'm like, what? How Honestly, did... I'm kind of with you. I don't like it when the character's just like the designated butt monkey. I like, like, it's fine if Squidward does something mean and you're like, ah, he deserves it. But when you just start fucking shitting on him out of nowhere in an episode, it's like, what? Well, it's mean spirited. Yeah. And like Trina is, the, the, the take that Trina is is the person who actually deserves it because she tries hard and actually you know gets fucked around a lot. It's great. It really does show. Well, there are a lot of shows like that, honestly, where it's like the person who disagrees with the main character because it's the main character they're disagreeing with is automatically the person who's wrong. It's dumb. I always it's hate dumb. that. Anyway, slap slap. Welcome to the next day, kids. You set out on your little trippy trap. Out to a place known as Fortune's Hall. The gambling hall nearby Willowside. Oh my goodness, it never stops. Um, you did level up from last time since you did a location, right? Let me double check. You should be level 14. Yes. So, I know that you have a tendency to put things off and not do them on time. You're level 14, took care I've of all your things, right? I've been doing them in-game really quickly so that I don't put them off. I'll waggle my finger at you because you I'm didn't have... 14. Where's your class feet and where's your archetype feet? For someone who okay. prefers people wearing shoes, you certainly like that say feet, feet a lot. Feet, feet. Get that lady some shoes! Or well, I'm gonna sing Chicago for you. <laughs> Oh, not that. I'm, <laughs> I'm a mean bean machine. Savvy's got the violence milk today. I'm gonna bite that beep a square off like a fresh sausage. <laughs> Excellent. I love how... Mm, I just love how they have all these fun rumors you could figure out, and I'm like... By this point, where are the player characters hang with anyone at all? I'm out to save an important part of the world. Or undo an incredible social injustice. Why should I even listen to a bunch of peasants who literally are going to die if this goes wrong? See, there's the there's the old question. Gosh, that's 13th eighth level thinking, in it? Whatever. Pans and asides. You guys are at Gambler's Hall. Fortune's Hall. It's a gambling place. Let's, here we go. Anyway, oh, this is like the whole mayor giving you a speech because the mayor loves talking to you about how they you should totally fix all their problems for them. Even though this whole thing at the hall is technically raw, not even related to the siege, so it's like, wow. You guys have a siege, an underground death cult of undead, and a siege going on, huh? Your gambling all got taken over by a bunch of fey that, you're, that an idiot summoned. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? This is the equivalent of arriving in like a small podunk town in America and you find out, well, it turns out the police has been replaced by, by cannibal aliens. Uh, the local priest has become an eldritch monster that's taken over the church, and every single farm is now consistent of sentient carrots fighting for their rights. But you know, it's just an average Tuesday. We've gotten used to it. That's basically what hearing news in America sounds like. How are you guys alive? Okay, I guess there's American. There's <laughs> American I do question man. that every time, though. How are we alive? Ow! Oh. But oh. here, can we see the horse? I love that. That's a question. Can we see the horse? I'm there. looking. For... My feet are done. Okay. Uh, by the way, you guys can take an ally with you if you want to, or you can go by yourself. We are not taking that. solace. Oh, I was going to say that's solace. I feel like this would be the worst place to take solace ever. It'd be like taking a small child anywhere. I, yeah, yeah, it is a, a gambling like, hall. Solace would tear this place down, I assume. Already a hive of villainy. Gosh. Here we go. Uh, well, then your only option is really, uh, well, there's Nightingale and there's Lodric. 
Uh, we, we haven't de- dealt with Palm Bunny before. We could probably buy him, see what he's up about. M- Paul Bunyan goes real nice with uh, Ruby. He did say it was, <laughs> this was the like reason all he was like his family was trying to investigate this place or something. Yeah. I mean, Paul Bunyan was uh, implied to be a frequenter of Fortune's Hall. He probably knows a way around. Yeah, he'd probably know the area. We should take him. I love one. His fairly effeminate face, and two, his incredible hero pose of staring off into the middle distance. <laughs> Look, that's just what heroes do. I have a hero character. That's what we do all the time. He's not anime in style, but he is anime in spirit, the pretty boy. The only place that uh, heroes can look is the middle distance. Uh, I just like that he has his hand over his head, like shielding from, like he's exploring and he has one leg up on a rock, but he's also looking at the camera just to make sure that you got a good sight. Yeah, <laughs> he's got the Captain for a photo. <laughs> well, Fortune's Hall itself, once it breaches through the trees of the forest, reveals itself to be an expansive gambling hall. There are, well, there's there's a large chunk over here, but that's like a, an upper floor. It appears to be like a, a front sitting area, and then a big old sign that says, Welcome to Fortune's Hall, where any man can make their fortune. It has a stable off to the side, which, uh, wow. I can't believe this random location in the middle of nowhere actually has, like, arrangements for your horse. Hey, they probably get a lot of travelers coming here. They probably get a lot of rich people who don't want to walk. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, valet parking. In addition, from a distance, you can tell there are several smaller buildings behind the, the main structure. As you approach... As your approach, you, you notice something else. There's, like, a, a lot of light coming out of this walled-off section over here. Like, intense rays are just... Like, there's a small sun or two floating around in there. It's probably not normal. The ground here, if you go off the dirt, gets, like, a little swampy. Because you are in an area that's A, close to the welt, and B, land is just a little swampy to begin with. It's a very wet land. Ooh. When you approach, the first thing you'll notice, as Bunyan explains how much he likes Fortune's Hall, and how great of a structure it is, full of frivolities, the best drinks, a lovely, if small, theater. It has all the things a man could want. And when you approach, however, those feelings get lesser. Two immense creatures of terrifying size, of busy, Scooping their hands into a pool of water and dragging out these people. No, they're small, right? No, yeah, they're small. These child sized tadpoles and just gobbling down on them with the greatest of ease. Off in the distance are two incredibly strange creatures, large and overweight, but the part that is unappealing is their incredibly long, leech like head and the long, very long, ghoulish tongue that whips at the air who seem to quite enjoy having their little chained pets participate in this action. They seem to mostly ignore you. Bunyan also does not appear to show any particular emotion to the fact that these tadpoles are getting consumed. Is this a... Is this a business as usual? Here? No. Although those are the procedures, are they not? We must strike. Oh, nice. I just kind of want to know what's going on right now. Yeah, well, well, I'm a little confused. Well, the, the tadpoles are making a hell of a splash, literally. They are frantically swimming around in circles. I mean, are we in the business of rescuing tadpoles? Is that what we've come to? I, I think, think we're in the business of rescuing, like, everybody. We're the good guys. That's a point. That is a point. Well, I think it might be a better idea to just let them eat it, and then when they're full, we'll have a much better time beating them down. Yes, maybe they'll be full of energy at that point. Also, it means that we let things that are maybe able to think be dead, which is mean. Oh, excuse me, despite the fact that I read Features of Fortune Hall, later, in the pond, read aloud, it does mention this place is actually on a small hill. Because, you know, if you're going to build a gambling hall, you got to build it on the high ground. Obi Wan taught me that you always must have the high ground. That way, that the way house. You're gonna attract all the 
Pyrolus. So what is it that you want to do with this particular situation present? I mean, I think we owe them the benefit of the doubt to at least try and speak to them first. Maybe they're maybe they're just snacking. Maybe maybe there's nothing. Maybe these people aren't, you know, diabolical evil. I mean, those guys with the snake heads. Does, I don't want to judge a book at its cover. Excuse me, that's important, <laughs> Tito. I forgot. These tadpoles are capable of... Does anyone here speak Sylvan? Uh, I do. I might. Let me have a look at my language. Then you can tell that these creatures are actually screaming the noise okay, that they're making. Not... Oh. I'm not okay with this. Okay. Uh... This is a rescue operation, then. Take the shot. Get a load of these boys. Uh, I'm gonna tell you to take a shot. But first, I'm gonna... Or, where was I? I just lost it. I gotta know where to go. There it is. Uh, yeah, it's the big spell. But... Have they added a companion sheet? Uh, nope. Uh, point at this guy and be like, Hey. Hey. And then, who you can take the shot? Depends. Like, hey. A weak fear thing. Whoops, I forgot I don't have a... Eh. Oh. Ah, darn. I actually get to go first. After Mr. Paul Bunyan. What is his initiative? 24. And yours is... Eh! Not that bad. Uh, uh, this one go off. Probably. I mean, technically I'm supposed to say no, because... The, the balance speller! If players go before monsters outside of initiative, that's a, that's a surprise run. That's not in this game. Everyone gets to go. Otherwise, why did you buy the game? People buy the game so they can do the game thing. Wah! Anyway, let's take a look. See, seal fate. What does this do? You utter a curse that a creature. Sir oh. Oh, oh, that, that's. Heck. You're choosing piercing. Sure enough. What does this do? Uh, fort save. Alright. Boop. That's a crit success. No, no, no. That's a success. Excuse me. I got weakness 2 until the end of your next turn. So luckily, like two additional damage, I guess. Luckily, your turret is quite late. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, he is a dueler, and he does like to use a little his fancy glittery longsword. But if you're gonna make him weak to something like that, then logically, it makes a little more sense to just move in a little closer, set himself up for a nice turn later. Make them come to him and put them full of arrows. Well, thanks what for effect. What, what an effect. Give me, give me the real spooks here. For you, this guy can't use a bow as good as you can. Good. Which one is the one that you made weak, Bella? The chipper or the naughty? Uh, the naughty. Good. That's what I was what? looking at. The so one that I'll has hunt the him. the one that has the targeting reticles. And then. I'm going to use my new feet. What happened to your old feet? Enchanting arrow. And my bow, which I've been upgrading throughout this entire campaign, mm -hmm. does... Why did I accidentally close that? Uh, does have a greater striking room. Delightful. Wait, now it's actually requiring me to say ammunition type for Demon's Folly. Delightful. I, I have to apparently put normal arrows in my inventory. Really? I thought I turned that off. That. I no, thought... Just told me. Uh, let, me, let me go on the settings and try to put their known off, because I recall that I was like, it's okay if you don't want to... System settings. Meta, homebrew, ammo, ammo, ammo. 
Quite a good fumble cards. World's clock, combo elements, fairy room, metagame information, show DCs, height damage, party division. Automation. Rules based vision, expi remove expired effects. Requires the GM to be logged in. Oh, so it makes me do things. It's like, hey, I'm gonna do it for you. Huh. I do not, in fact, see where this comes in, which, um, a little concerning. Yeah, when I hit it, it says there's, uh, no ammo. It's just goofy. So I guess I'll just throw some arrows in my inventory. I appreciate and understand what they're going for, but arrows are so light. And for the most part, most APs have you close enough to something somewhere you can get some fresh ones. Who cares? Besides, you have so many yeah. special arrows already. There, I have put... Arrows. I now have arrows. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, okay, well, you broke it because, like I said, the uh, increase buttons don't work as they should. So here's 20 arrows. Okay. There. Arrow. Now I can shoot. But actually, if ten arrows is light, that's actually pretty heavy. I'm a hero point that I'm not missing this. <laughs> yeah. Pew. So don't forget, we're using different rules here. Yep. Whoop, that's success. Give me the damage. And give me the 3d6. Uh... Okay. Hey. Um, this creature is in fact a chaotic evil fiend. So I don't care what they fucking say, it's a demon. <laughs> Close enough. Listen, classifications are stupid anyway. They're entirely a human construct. That's why angels can become bad boys and good boys too. But that is a kind of granularity that doesn't belong in a, in a fancy game where you can have that kind of distinction. And you can, in fact, be like, no, you're evil. You're evil. Capital E. That's why it's uppercase. Sila, your bow does special things when it hits bad boys, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It does. It has, uh, it has Bane. Bane. It has 1d6? Yeah. Five. You would have missed out on five yeah. damage if you did. A big fat arrow sticks out of its large and corporal body, but it doesn't seem as impeded by it as you might have hoped. These guys are tough. It takes uh, two damage from the Bella. Oh, yeah, it takes next two damage because Bella made him, made him feel bad. I sealed their fate for a little bit. With fucking two weakness, my goodness, your spell did two damage. A level four spell! <laughs> yeah, that, that is... I... It, it is nifty that, like, a crit fail would just make that permanent. Yeah, that is well, how curses work. If you had a fighter who could hit, like, 20 billion times. We could do a yeah, real that's... fighter. It'd be yeah, better if Lederick landed his shot. I'm the... going to move over here alongside Lederick. And then... Have... Garlic use his action to try and intimidate the one in front. Uh, th that being said, like, Jesus Christ, the spell scales like ass. <sighs> like, I know that you're worried, Paizo, but weakness is not that good. If it's like one. Ten weakness? Mwah! Five weakness? Mmm. But two weakness? That's what? An extra four, six damage a turn? For a fourth level spell. And you have to get the six to get... Mm. The scaling is shit. We're gonna work on that one. Anyway, you try to intimidate this big boy. And fail, probably. And then You're then off by one. <laughs> <laughs> really? Wow. Yep. DC uh, 29. Something to remember. And I'll ready an attack with my glaive when they try to get close. Which is to say these creatures appear to be big and tough, but they're all bark no bite. Well, they are bite. And bark. But... And look at all those teeth. They're pretty bite. They're exclusively bite. As the slime and blood drips from its lips. It gives a... Well, 
it, the lick doesn't really fix a lot. What the fuck? Psionic scent? <laughs> you smell it with the brain. Oh, it has the power to smell, but only things that have, have thoughts. How does that even work? Well, if you have an intelligence of minus three or higher, it can... Your yeah, brain. How, does, how do you know the difference? I, wow, that's wait, that's doesn't smell give out smells. That's demons for you. Yeah, it, it's magic. Oh, excuse me. There's oh, something worth considering in a bit. These guys have auras. I hate auras because they don't show up. Although, yeah. although, <laughs> oh, oh, there's something I found that can help me with this. Is it a grenade? Super grenade. No. Rocket launcher. Rocket launcher. But I found a, a token magic thing that lets me apply like an actual aura area on people. I just mm -hmm. forgot which the one is that adds just a, a, a big fat circle on a guy, but we'll figure it out later. <laughs> Where's the circle button? I need the circle. The point is, this delightful little boy stampedes over with its incredible movement, although it has to move around the pond because big as it is, the po pond or not, it has to take two actions to get there. Either it splooshes through, or it gets caught in the water. Difficult terrain, and has to do with that. I love how there's a there's a, a button which is called Glory to Pixels, and it just does this. Just just makes me a little pixely. <laughs> Auto destroy example. Click 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 click. What? They give these very good names. I'll be honest point is, he gets up real close. You start to notice that surrounding these creatures is this strange smell that begins to work your mind, inflicting the least interesting status effect in the game, Fascinated, which really only makes misses of Bella. And I really? guess also fool you, because, you know, Eldritch Archery it requires concentration. But it just makes him the target, then. What happens if you're fascinated by two things at once? Do they mutually exclude one another? It's like, no, you can't target him because you're already fascinated by him, but I know you're fascinated by him too, but it doesn't work like that. <laughs> Point is, what does he have? He can disgorge bile. That's hilarious. Let's go with that. Yum, yum. Uh, oh, all creatures within 30 feet. Here we go. You suddenly get surrounded not only in the weird smell that surrounds it, but also a sudden blast of bile. Everyone make a DC 32 fort save. Okay, okay. Paul Paul Bunyan. Paul Yay. Paul Bunyan. Good old fleet. Oh. Well. <laughs> oh, everyone else like Matt 20s on it. But... <laughs> Everybody except for you. On a failure, the creature sickened. That's great. I love seconds. So yeah, only Fuyu takes any takes takes the damage on top with Mr. Bunyan. <laughs> da, 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 da. Wait, these things have spells. They do have spells. Only oh, yeah, because they're 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 fiends. They get to teleport around the place. Go back home and then slip back in. Oh, I love things that are called things like corrosive kiss. Mwah! What? Oh, that's just hilarious. Dun, 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 dun. Well, passive caustic fog. Whenever gut wrencher is within another stench aura. Well, lucky you. There's no one else here with a stench aura. Time for some bruising. Whoosh. Three, oh, these guys also have 40 feet. Oh, cool. Go for it. Ba ba bella. Yeah. A guy runs up to you. Full speed ahead. What does he have? Oh, he has a delightful claw. <laughs> he tries to bite your head off. Chomp, chomp. Be careful, Bella. I got it. Your head should stay attached. That's 33. Right. As you have a shouting match with him. This naughty boy goes for the intimidation on you, Ruby, but I think your DC's a little too high for that. Then with a great leap and bound, he comes closer to you. Prepared attack. No, an attack was prepared. Hit. Give him the goods. 
You stab at it, yet with all its mass and weight, it gets closer. Um, which one of these is the most fun? Why are these attacks chaotic and evil, when they don't deal chaotic or evil damage? That's the question. Your issy is too high! Cling clang! You manage to sweep him off to the side with your impaling weapon. But Laura, what do you do? I, I'm fascinated with this guy. Might as well just lance him. Well, it's actually, there, there's a will save involved, but... Oh. Oh, excuse me, there's like a whole bunch of other things. Can you roll me that will save for, for Ernest? Uh, for me? Yeah. Right. Will save. Failure by one. Uh, here we go. Okay, cool. Well, it doesn't do too much right now, other than make you fascinated. But next turn, fail again, things get bad. Alright. Oh, wait. Incapacitation, you're a higher level. Ooh, in that case, it's a success, you're fine. Yeah. Delightful. Get Lance. Wow, what a hit. Pew. And he... Da, 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 da. He is also weak. Too good. Yeah. And, uh... I'll just... Go back a little. Delightful. Boy. The Gut Wrencher walks forward. The Gut Rager, excuse me. He moves forward, throws a large spew of bile. A good old bunion. Gross. And then reaches down to grab himself a nice tadpole snack. No! The creature does indeed yell out at its predicament. What the hell? Why'd this become night? Why did it become night? Who did this? <laughs> the Who did? Rotation of the world this game has on. a day-night cycle, apparently. Independent of you. <laughs> I, have, I, I literally have no idea. I didn't push any button that should have caused this. <laughs> I thought maybe it was Loderick, because, you know, Loderick, because he, maybe he's blinded. Maybe the game's like, oh, he's so sick. The world is dark. But no, it's just, it's night now. Maybe it's the calendar. That's possible. Maybe. Oh, yeah, because a round passed, and it's like midnight according to the clock, so it's like, oh, it's night! <laughs> it's Because <it's, it's, laughs> I don't set the freaking clock, why should I? Let Eric beat up that big guy, throw your weapon aside, and grip thine long sword, and get hit by two attacks of opportunity. Because Laura's the only one who speaks Sylvan, this is her right now. That sound effect is a little, uh... What's this? What's up with that dog? <laughs> he is terrified. <laughs> Look at that. That poor, pure, innocent pupil. Yeah, that's Bella right now. Lederick that's Alora. has donned his blade. Ha-ha! Guiding finish. As one hand and one hand, as the other hand free. Strikes this weapon, moves his target up to 10 feet, the space he can reach. Even moving it through his own space. On the felt save, because it moves 5 feet this way. Yeah. What's he? Show off when Loderick can see. Oh, oh no, that's... <laughs> they didn't properly set up his actions. Cool. <laughs> that is supposed to be a separate entry, not part of that. Cool. Dueling parry, has other hand free, gets a plus two until the starter's turn. Okay, he can do that. But that's not very relevant. What he wants to do is grab this big boy. Da 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 Grisp. And now that I have you, let me show you what I'm capable of! Oh, wait, excuse me. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. Because I didn't use MSP. <laughs> <laughs> I can't let him be too cool about this. For you. Oh. The die does thingy. That's new. Yeah, it does whooshies. Out of my way. <laughs> First, I'm gonna sneeze. Bless you. Yes. And then, I'm gonna shift my hunting to the gut rager. 
the one that's near us. Because I don't yeah. like him. He's being rude. Yeah. Now I'm just going to unload at him. Give him all the arrows. Take this arrow. That's a crit. And then these other two arrows. Miss. Miss. Hey, I still got a crit, though. Mm-hmm. The God Rager is not, in fact, a fiend. He's just a dude. And he's stuck to the ground. There and it is. That's matter. Ha ha! Oh. Ruby! Huh. What do you plan to do? Surrounded by two such magnificent foes. Our attention is kind of split three ways. I'm not sure who we're pursuing anymore. Focus fires for nerds. It's going for one close to me. Which is to say, I'm totally going to start focus firing you idiots to teach you a god dang lesson already. I'm going to yeah. capitalize on Bunyan's work. If he's grabbing it, that means I've got a better advantage. So I'll take a... Uh, no, I don't need to take a Steffi. I'm fine. They, they already used their attack opportunity, so they can't go again. Yeah. Besides, I've got range. If you want to play according to how your character should play, then play a play anything other than Pathfinder Tui. Tui will shit on you if you decide to play your fucking character in combat. <laughs> if you're not playing perfectly, you're not playing at all. And I wish I was kidding, but that is exactly how they designed their APs for the most part. It's dumb. It's terrible. It's like, they're all like, oh, you can still roll. No, you can't. You you, you got in the way, game. But Ruby, you gotta do something. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Garlic intimidate them, because that's a different target than the first one. It's Garlic's action. This guy gets... Oh, that's a critical success. Ooh. Big spooky. And I'll attack. One. And a Ooh. power attack for a second one. Oh, going in for that big risky swing. But it hits. Hey, can't argue that. Can't argue with that low roll. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. Dookie. That's a lot of ones. It is a lot of ones. But it is also... Uh, it's not a lot of damage. I'm not going to give you that one. <laughs> Unfortunately, escape attempts do not trigger attacks with the if I recall correctly. But it tries to escape. It's not going to let itself get grappled by a little man. By just a little boy. Lodric may be strong, but he is not that strong. Creature frees itself, <sighs> arms wide, before descending down onto Lederick with a delightful double swing. Uh, Halt's already suffering MAP, so it's gonna have to go for the old classic. Uh, oh, let's intimidate him. Let's give him the old spook, and then we go for the claw. Lederick is a little frightened, and then gets hit. Ooh, it's a solid blow. But pow, I love that the damage button is just there now. It makes it a little easier on the little meat. It's nice. It means you don't have to keep opening the sheet a thousand times. The <laughs> gut rager. No! The gut is raging. He had Mexican. Gosh, don't, 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 don't. Let's see. The gut rager propels its esophagus out of its body to deliver an acidic blow. It makes an unarmed strike into a creature or unattended object within 30 feet. That feels weird that it has to specify unattended object. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On a critical hit, the target also takes persistent acid damage. Well, it is also clumsy for one round. Well, it's going to go and just bite. The problem that I have is that because it just says an unarmed strike, it could do use its claws even though it's the esophagus that extends outward. But hey! I'm not the one who writes shit around here. I'm not the one who gets us underpaid. Letteric, watch out! You are being acidificated. Oh no, it's on a persistent. Uh, does he have attack for opportunity? Nope. No, he doesn't have a reason to get too close to you. Uh, other than flanking Letteric. 
da, 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 da. Let's go grab that little man. Oh no, how fate has turned. Sick, frightened, and now grisped firmly. And now getting squeezed. Gosh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna go to settings and I'm gonna turn that one down a bit. Alora. Uh, uh, what to do? What to do? I'm I'm just gonna wait. What's the area on this? Twenty foot first. All right, I'm gonna hit a twenty foot first. Try to get you know. I, I assume Bunyan is good and isn't going to be hurt by this. Bunyan is neutral. He's not affected by any alignment damage. Okay, good. So, yeah. He's just a guy. He's just a dude. Guy. I'm just I'm just a guy, man. What do you, what do you think of me? I'm just, I'm just a little guy. So, yeah. I appreciate that you're aiming in the middle of nowhere. Yep, just right there. Baboom! Fort saves for all... That's uh, a failure and two successes. Gotcha. Twenty-four. That's a pretty low roll. I think that's average-ish. It's a little below it. Do, 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 do. Take half and then add ten. Weak to good. They're weak to good. They're fiends. They don't like getting hit with goody two shoes energy. Wah, 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 wah. Then I'm, I'm gonna mm -hmm. it, and and still then tell try to tell the gal pods to just like flee as best they could. Run right away, on. children! They, they 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 have like ten feet of movement speed on the land. You can out walk them. <laughs> on a little leash. Hey, they're easy to walk, I guess. All right, Blood Rager moves in close. Whoosh. It's gonna give good old fighter that old carny kiss. Miss. And once more, as the rounds pass, oh, oh God damn, I'm gonna set the current time to something else. It is now midday. Thank you. It's like an over anxious stagehand. Lederick, how do you still have a plus 28 to hit? Oh, because you're, you're a swashbuckling kind of fighting guy, hmm? Hmm? He will not be dissuaded from his course of action. hi -ya. Ho ho! And of course, a little ha-ha! Well, he only hits once, but that's all you need sometimes. And he gets an extra 3d6, was it? 3d6? 3d6. I don't know what your goddamn class is, Lederick. But you sure, sure are funny. For you! Go! Um, over here. And then I'm gonna shoot. The chipper one that Lodger, uh, Paul Bunyan's fighting. Through the Gut Rager. Pew pew. Paul and just to Bunyan. make sure it does more damage, I'm using one of my spell strike arrows. Pew pew. Yeah. Well. well, you hit the guy. Hit. Not the guy in the back, though. Well, I guess I hit the, uh, the gut rager. The arrow, however, does not properly penetrate. Blit. And what spell was in there? Damage for the spell I used. Uh, the one I used for is magnetic acceleration. Delightful. I guess that's all I got. Oh, here we go. I found it. Simple color. There you go. 
Now I can say little baby ores. Right. Ruby, what does your turn look like? Red or letter X still get shaken about. I'll have Garlic intimidate the guy on the bottom. Not the guy he already did, the little gun rager. Uh -huh. Hello. And, and then swing at the chipper's zero leg. Zildrick. That's one hell of a slam! Get him out of your mouth. Yeah. It's gross. It turns into a like thin dusting of a foul smelling powder. And then rotate to the gut rager. Rotate. Rotate. Ow! Oof! And then, last one. None of them have weapons, so that probably won't be relevant. Just swing one more time, I guess. Ah, alright. I'm done. The gut wrencher peels himself free from the arrow. Ha ha! Why is it a static tent? I guess because it's a. Despite its fear, it's in. Oh, wait. This. Now they got him grabbed. He will not go down without taking someone down with him. Even if it has to be this goober. Oh, wait. Jaws. No, these Jaws decks look really inaccurate for some reason. Lederick has no armored glass to defend against. A firm first swipe. Ow! ow! Where was I having clickety clacks? You having fun? Yeah, I was just fine with somebody. <laughs> Maybe you should get like a headset where you have like, just like mine, where you have like a little button you can push and it just mutes you instantaneously. It makes it a lot easier. I should hit that more. I didn't think. I always forget a lot of this keyboard is because I don't use it enough. Or at the very least, use it when you sneeze. <laughs> Well, that was a very yeah. sudden sneeze, by the way. That's what they want you to think. That's what the government wants you to think. Missed the parry window. Let's see. What does he got? What does he got? What do I got? What the hell's feasting tentacles? There's two tentacles on his back that can be used to suck the life from its plate. Oh. Gross. Ah. Oh, it just gets to do that instantaneously? All right. Well, I guess we're starting to start grabbing other people then. No. Because it gets to drain people and then gets 20 hit points back. So, Ruby, let's see how uh, you like being grisped. Uh, good news, though, that those tentacles will take a turn to get you. But until then, it'll just enjoy giving you the old squeeze. Alora, tentacles mm. wiggle their way towards Ruby to suck out the blood. No. Like a so sippy straw. Thankfully, unlike some people, I'm actually wearing a shirt and therefore not entirely vulnerable. I'm assuming your shirt also has chain or something in it. Unlike some people, <laughs> <laughs> he cries. I'm pretty sure all of you wear armor in some, some degree. Damn, I'm gonna wear full plate. That's, uh. What do we do? I'm just gonna do the, the usual, just gonna divine lance. Beam attack! Uh, Kamehameha! Uh, it's a naughty Zograf who has a ruby, right? What? This this guy has grabbed all the ruby. Yeah, the big yeah, boy's yeah. got me. Yeah, just gonna smack him. Mias! Damn it. A guy comes shoulder charging at you. Uh, Ruby, technically speaking, being grabbed does not prohibit you from making tax opportunity because of reasons. Okie dokie. Yeah. Oh no! That's a that's almost a double crit. In case you don't know, these guys are like level ten. They're like uh, technically outside. Of, uh, they're at the bottom of the range of what you should be able to handle 
without it becoming boring. Anyway, this guy goes head on into Alora. That hits. That's a grab. Once it has you grabbed, it goes for the gut with its claws. Lederick has had enough, but he... <sighs> According to Pathfinder 2E rules, someone can have you grab, but you can't attack them. Because reasons. Because balance. Because fuck you, I guess. I mean, technically you couldn't in 3.5 either, but in 3.5 there was kind of this unspoken rule that your GM had to fix the rules all the time. Similar to 5e. Just get your head out of your ass, Pathfinder 2E. Get your head out of your ass. You can't write for every situation. Especially not if your book has to... Because... Big flaw that the book has that no one wants to talk about. The book is designed for players first, and you can't really include weird, arbitrary things like if you are large or have reach and grab someone with reach, they can attack you as if you they have reach too. Because what player needs that information? <laughs> but that aside, Lederick may be drained, but he's still full of vim and vigor. Wait, no, critical. Unlike the large... There's so many things with an X in this. So many Zolgath, Silver X. You may have tarnished me, but I stand tall and proud. Whoosh. And an extra 66 on top. He shows off, and as a result, there's a big beaming smile as he acts with a little more confidence for you. Okay, thankfully I can have two hunted targets. So the first one is still hunted. Impeccable. Yep, I took that ability. So, I'm gonna Hunter's Aim at it. I don't have anything that particularly help with arrows here, so I'm just gonna shoot it. This. c c, -c, -c crit Soft. Extra 2d6 from your bane. Well, it's almost down for the count, but it's still standing, and soon it will recover hit points when it sucks out of ruby, the delicious okay. crimson red. I shoot two more times. No! <laughs> no, yeah. I forbid you with the power of jinxing. <gasps> ha! Suck jinx it. Didn't work. One of them still oh, hit. No. I'm such a prophetic jinxer, and somehow I fail. If you roll a six for damage, it's out. Come on. Hey! Yes! <laughs> the dunk. Ruby. You unjinxed me. Awkwardly lands adjacent to Garlic because you were picked up off of him. So I imagine that you'd fall near him, not on him. <laughs> Ruby, thine turn has come. Just going to not even bother getting onto back onto garlic. Just I don't think I can get into a place where I can flank it, so I'll just try beating the hell out of it with my knockdown. Yeah, trip him. Oh no! Oh no! I'm knocked down. Wait, so do I fall down too, or is he like holding me like on the floor? Uh, he's still holding on to you, but he's he's prone in the sense that he's off balance and like half on the ground, but he still has a grip on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's weird. And then, last action, I guess just stab it while it's on the ground. These guys Oof, are they are weenies. Alora, yeah. flee from his grasp. Or just shoot him in the face. It's your choice. I, I can. I'm close range. Do the, ex do the exploit. Smack. Right, let me target the guy first. That's smart. There you go. Attack. That hits. Mm -hmm. The blasting light hits him, but it's not as effective as on the Zilverix, because, you know, he ain't none of those guys. But he eats babies. He's evil, yes, which means you can hurt him with it, but he's not like that kind of evil, 
where it sears his living existence away. It doesn't say evil in his birth certificate. Does it say Everyone gets an alignment chart on their on their birth certificate. Gotcha. Yeah. That's how it works. Except for player characters. That is Assigned that paladin needed. at birth. <laughs> he maintains the grapple on you, although he increases it to a restrain. And Ooh. then he has to get up. You know what that means. Give him the old... Show him what you got. Oh. Oh. Again. Ru oh, I'm just going to assume that one's a crit. <laughs> and that's one more hit point they needed to take him out. Bonk. Oh, so his I arms are still on. And now, I, now you have no arms. No, his arms are still on me. But the rest of his body isn't. The rest of his body isn't. That's I've it. His it doesn't arms exist. His body. Lederick spins his blade and sweeps it into a scabbard in one fell swing. Aha! Good to see that I'm standing with such fine combatants who can admire my handiwork. Are you good, boss? You kind of got slurped like a juice box there. Despite the fact he looks a little pale around the cheek, he, sw he swings his arms f parallel to the ground. No, not worry. I'm fine. Nothing a good night's sleep can't fix. We are playing 5th edition, right? Uh oh. Nah. Dra drain reduces <laughs> drain reduces bar one every every time you get a good nap, so he'll be fine. Yeah. Hey, Alora, you look like you could understand these things. Do you want to, you know, chat with the things we just rescued? Yeah. First, I'm gonna hand uh, the old bunion a healing potion. That bunion is fine. If anyone decides to spend anything to get like stamina points back, he'll get half his back because he basically is a team party companion. So he turns it down. Like, yeah. hey, don't don't worry about me. Okay. Right, he's yeah. got his own cities. Not to mention he has like ruby level stats, so he's probably fine in most fights. Yeah. You head on over to the pool of uh, little little creatures. Um, they probably are children, if not not like you know your level of adulthood, because they all speak Ew. they speak a little clumsily. But to be fair, you imagine that it might be because they seem to be aquatic and they're like poking their heads out of the water. Maybe that's getting in the way of their speech. Little babbies. Hey. These guys are like yeah, level seven babbies. I don't. Level seven. They're babbies, but level seven. There, there's there's eight of them, and it considers it a low encounter. I'm like, is this is this just because you want the party to mop everyone up before that tallow fight happens, the tallow ooze fight? <laughs> anyway, the point is that these guys are like no threat to you at all if if you were doing this raw, but they're like. Uh, they, they they give you congratulations and, and thank you, but then they immediately start yelling about their moms and pops. Oh, where did they go? Like what what what's wrong with the moms and pops? Inside, inside they say. There's butchers oh. and rocks and stones, and creatures with four arms but only two elbows. Oh, that sounds impractical. It That's sure does. And then there's these weird things that emit light in every direction, blinding light. There's undead even. They don't even want to be here. That's a lot of trouble going on in there. We'll 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 try our best to solve that and probably save your fans because we want. That. I like how you're constantly putting the maybes in there when talking to kids. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I guess we'll try. Maybe your parents are viciously slaughtered. You get an unsynchronized chorus of Safe Mama, Safe Papa. Rip. Rip. Anyway, you now have an overactive frog pond. Ain't that great? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give them head pets. And then, uh, you know, tell your them hand is you. very slimy when you do that. Frog. And I. Tell anyone else about the uh, threat that the, uh, the like, you know, forearm dudes, undead, big stone things. Yeah, that's that's the gist of what I got from there. Off in the corner, Lederick is getting rid of a sickening condition by vomiting a lot. It's possibly golems again. I, it's I golems. pat Lederick's back with my slime hand. It's, it's gonna be okay. You're helping. What? As I mentioned, do not worry. It was simply a stroke of ill fortune. Say, Chief. Now where do we go? I'm not too familiar with breach and clear operations myself. 
Oh, we're experts. Well, the only thing yeah. I clear out is the house of safe. <laughs> oh wait, the doors are open. You can't really breach open doors. Lederick still makes a kicking motion at the open air and goes, that's because you don't have the attitude. Okay. And word. Hmm. Place looks deserted. Anyway, you leave the outside and the stable behind, and the the croaks, of course, entering the foyer. Uh, I'm just gonna give you the log a short of it. Uh, this is beautiful. It's all made with mahogany, silk tablecloths, fancy stuffed chairs. Mmm. You could lie on the floor and be more comfortable than anywhere in a modest house. That carpet, man, that carpet. Every table is also set with an incredible amount of food. And a gentle music f fills the room. Where's the music coming from? I mean, this place doesn't look like it's under attack. In addition, there are two large sacks which have been placed on the countertop of the bar. I uh, know, it looks pretty intimidating. Normally, in this room, your treasure would be stealing from this establishment, which is really odd. So Why instead, steal? I have offered less and morally gray treasure for you to take. <laughs> oh boy, less morally gray treasure, my favorite. Yay. These these bags almost certainly do not belong in this establishment, as they are very crude burlap sacks, compared to everything else here, which is like so... You imagine that they put the day's winnings in a silk pouch in a place like this? And they make a whole deal of slowly pouring the money in and then pulling it shut. Thank God there's some ethereal force that is deciding to make things so that we don't feel bad. Feeling from establishment that is under attack by outside forces. Anyway, looking down the hallway, you can see that eventually it uh, terminates into a curtain. And there appears to be a door and a offshoot, Ruby. For you can also see this. There's an offshoot here, by the way, which is like, I can't ping. Did I turn off the ping module? No, it's still there. It's just busted. Yeah, I can ping. It's just busted for me. No. There we go. Fixed. Can ping. Anyway, there's like a little offshoot over here. And there's a curtain at the end of the hall that you could push aside if you had to, or just walk through. And there's also closed doors over here. If, if uh Oh, the through. curtain waves slightly, so there might be a draft. You scoop all the money out of the sacks, but leave the sacks behind. Good. Yeah, I mean, we're not lugging around sacks. We got our own sacks. Magic ones. Lederick takes a quick note of all the bottles and makes sure that they're all still there. Maybe you should check to make sure they're not poisoned. Ah, you're right. And he grabs a, a very fancy ivory corkscrew opener from the, from the counter and just I mean, opens a bottle. I mean, he just vomited. This is probably a bad idea. The thing that I often forget about sick and is that while you're sick and you can't ingest things. <laughs> Not even potions. Huh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Which, honestly, uh, considering how hard it is to get rid of it, I guess it's like a way to encourage people to actually bother reducing it. But hey, it's neat. Ah. Anyway. You... We're mentioning the locked door over there, Laura. Oh yeah, uh, if you're feeling in a breach, breach clarity mood, there's doors. Or... I suppose... If there's... Doors that are closed, that's the ones that people don't want us going through. It also means if we open the doors or they're locked, they know that's where we're coming in. Yeah. So... I could keep it. What, you I fear anything problem. we're going to find here? Have you seen uh, this lady in a swinging arm? Have you seen how that arrow just gutted a man? Uh, yes, I've shot those arrows a lot. Yeah, we're, we're pretty familiar with the way we fight. Well, it's more of that there are parents that we want to rescue, I think. I'm assuming you told us that. Uh, yeah. And I would prefer not to give them a chance to get killed before we can get in there and kill the killers. Well, then, shouldn't we expediate? Good point. Let's get going. Kick these doors down. 
which Garlic can do very easily with his dual wings. You see a large passage in front of you. Off to the left are a series of doors. Only the last one is closed. At the end of the hall is another door. There's a door off to the right, and then there's a passage that goes off to the left in between the rooms. Start cautiously going down this hallway. The 3x3 three three chambers off to the left are all gambling chambers where collections of cards and what, what's it called? Like uh, roulette tables and fancy gambling institutions are found. Okay. Unpopulated, looks like. The door doesn't like it when I move down two by the door. Wide hallway. The door off to your right is a. Uh, well, if you were to bother checking it, it's locked. Like you would very easily discover that. Down the hallway is a door, and underneath the crack of that door, but it's very small crack. Again, nicely made doors. Is a a flurry of light. Oh wait, uh, I need to get it for a second. Bear back. Mm -hmm. Do thine best, okay. Bella. Ba -ba Don't get lost. She will. She's small. <sighs> Recreating the Dwarven, the Daedric artifacts from Elder Scrolls into Pathfinder 1E. Now that's a fucking question. Also depends on which Elder Scrolls you're using. Yeah, like, aren't they different? Yeah, they are different. Especially because in Oblivion and Skyrim, you only have cast on strike. Whereas in Morrowind, there's a bit more dynamicism to what a magic item can be. Also, Skyrim dumped it down even further, for the most part. So, which one you take really impacts what you're making, especially when you consider things like armor as well. Mm. Let's take a look. Oh, gosh, I, I'm not tempted to go through this whole article and take a look at them. Oh, cool. There's even, like, upgrades. They're using a, a legacy weapon. It's cool. That's always neat. This guy has no fucking clue what Pathfinder 1E is because necrotic damage isn't a thing. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Dawnbreaker grants immunity to necrotic damage, which does not exist in Pathfinder 1E. <laughs> Doesn't in 2E either. It's a 5E thing only. So I think this guy might have just stolen from someone. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Instead, what you're going for, guy, but if you say it's a longsword, people know that it's a martial weapon one handed, know its damage type, and also know that it has a crit range. Why does it have a... Why does a longsword have a crit range of 2 on 20? That should be 2 on 19 20. Hmm. 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 Oh, it's because it fucks up undead. Whenever it lands a killing low critical hit on a dead creature, it causes a 30-foot explosion of light that ravages undead. Or be affected by... Tur turn undead is not a fucking thing in Pathfinder 1E. It's channel energy, which in turn can be made into turn undead using a feat. This thing. this whole fucking thing reads like someone just took it from 5e. Yeah. I am on the yeah. It started in five fi fi yeah, yeah. It shows that it started in 5e, sir. Attunement is a thing he has in there. God damn, this guy doesn't know a fucking clue what he's doing. Magical aura. You need to include caster level, sir. You have to include caster level. It's important for identification purposes. And also for determining the aura's strength. Although I guess these are all artifacts, so they would all fall under the category of my eyes, my eyes, oh my god, my eyes. That's the technical term. All these weapons are two times on 20. Which to me implies this... F oh no, wait, the Ebbing Blade Blaze has 19 on 20. Is there a bow in here? How does no one in the comments point out this fucking guy has no idea what he's doing? Huge damage with full baby getting a spell slot back. Now this guy's just talking about specifics. The Wabajack. Yeah. This guy knows what the fuck he's talking about. He's like, hey, Webjack works like a 20th level cast, a 30 stat score. S actually, that doesn't make any sense, because that doesn't determine the DC. I think it's utterly broken, as it is utterly useless or worse, actively harmful to the party. It's like a deck of many, but for spells. 
Here we go. The spell. Oh, Jack, all right. The spell is a polymorph. Roll a random encounter based on. Oh, oh. Spells targeted. Hits a random target in a cone in front of the character. If it's a teleportation spell, the user will know and have 12 seconds to be in contact with their party members or before being whisked away. <laughs> it, oh, be, the spell just casts a random spell in the game. Just like that. Wow. If it is the wish spell, you get to make a wish. But that's like one in a bajillion. There's so many spells. It could be wish. It could be color spray. Or it can be... Fuck. Or it could be wish. The one that... Or the one that makes that tiny, uh, the, the tiny hut. <laughs> AC plus two. But, but, why are you going to include the armor class of a shield if you're not going to include the ACP and ASF? Come on, man. Don't just look at the Pathfinder wiki and go, I get this now. If you gotta make shit for someone, at least at least look at what the th tables have on them. Oh, do shields actually weigh fifteen pounds? Have I forgotten that? That that sounds like a lot. Oh, those are heavy steel shields. Those things are like super heavy. It's almost like the name implies what they are. All right. Bella, did All you right. did you know that heavy items are heavy? I I would imagine. Oh, I'm fucking stupid. Apparently, I don't know that. Oh, no. Let's see. Heavy steel shield is indeed 15 pounds. Neat. But, as I mentioned, it also has an AC ACP of minus 2 and an ASF of 15. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if you made any light shields, because you can tell that they're 5 e dumbasses if they made a light shield and they gave a plus 2 AC. Although, why are none of these... Wait. So, is this just a shield, or is it a plus... Wow. The shield is utter garbage. Sure, it grants you immunity to to some fun stuff. Oh god, resistances and immunities. Grants wear four immunity to disease and a spell resistance equal to two plus the constitution. That is garbage for an artifact. On top of the fact that it's not even actually enchanted, it should be a plus one shield, because that's the basics for all things. Oh, In combat, it floats around the wearer, maybe you... It's without requiring to be held. There are things that do this way better, including buying a wand of shield... Removing... Oh, there you go. Removes armor check. God damn it. So basically, it's a dumb shield whose main benefit is it's a shield you don't have to hold. Why does the weight even matter at that point if it just floats around you? He's doing a bad job. <laughs> He's doing a very bad job. Listen, I'm gonna... I get a very strongly worded letter. Listen, I'm gonna... One saffy letter. Before before we go back, there's one more thing I want to pull up because I think it's important. Magic items. I want to pull up a magic shield. Just give me give me a magic shield. Here we go. Oh yeah, it's just called aura. Faint transmutation. Yep. Didn't include that. Didn't include that. What's the cost of these things? What's the crafting cost? I don't know. Those aren't important and aren't relevant for artifacts. But some of these just sound like dumb weapons. I'm pretty sure there are better magic shields that float around you. The immunity to disease also isn't all that great. Because by the time you've got something that fancy, you probably have someone who can just slap you with remove disease on a, on a dime. <laughs> also, the strongly worded letter from Safi always makes me think of Claire. Dear from software. Why are the... <laughs> Why are all the weapons from the Elder Scrolls in D&D terrible? <laughs> just writing to the software regardless of subject. That is how she's been for the last five years. <laughs> <laughs> Every time something's wrong in any video game, dear from software. Why does a skeleton key have a magical aura of illusion when it's a fucking skeleton key? I understand that can make you a... It, it does three things. It either makes you invisible, unlocks devices, which is transportation and abjuration, depending on how you want to play it. It makes you invisible, that's illusion. It can teleport you, that's conjuration. Or give you advantage on a stealth check, which is again transportation because it's a personal buff. Why is it... <laughs> get out of here. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. I can't wait for the people who know what they're yes. talking about to get into this room. I just... I, don't know, his legs. I, will, I will lose my trust in this, in this goddamn wiki if no one shows up and goes, Attunement isn't a thing, you idiot. They can say it as nice as they want to. But waggle waggle. Anyway, Bella, you're back. You guys are doing breach and clear. Walking down the hallway. Yeah. I 
I VR. gather that that door probably leads out into the courtyard. Presumably. Or the lights before. It makes sense dimensionally. Do you guys want to head out there and try and deal with whatever's causing light? Do we have some way to prep for that? Against light? Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to be like, blinded if we go out there. Probably not now. I mean, no. I I usually make light. I don't. I don't extinguish. I it. shoot things. <laughs> I I have to spell magic, but I don't think it'll help. Yeah. The. Ah. Uh, I will lead in this. Are you sure that's a good idea? No. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bella. I'm gonna knock an arrow. Yeah, but maybe, maybe I'll go first. Right. I'm the, I'm the yeah. big strong yeah, one. I get the no. <laughs> and door kick. The garden terrace is surrounded by a wrought iron fence covered with creeping vines. Blooming buttercups grow in pots ring the terrace. The center of the terrace contains several broken theater seats piled in a heap. In addition... Uh, nope, that's not relevant right now. What is relevant is that there are two very big bright light sources here. Ah. Jeez! Uh, let's see. Do they have any fancy auras that I need to apply to your... A here we go. Shining child is flat foot of one area of darkness. Sure. It's in a fucking... It's blinding aura, so you have to turn that light source off first. Ah, uh, here we go. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Um, alright. As you open the door, you're immediately confronted with an incredibly bright light. It's like you go from standing in a somewhat dimly lit room to going staring straight into the sun. Uh, anyone who can see them has to roll... We'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. What do you do with this given situation? Uh, just kind of cover my eyes slightly and go like, hey, Whoever's out there, can you please turn that down? Okay, I know we're here. Oh god, that's a great gif. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets destroyed. Oh no, now I have to make the Minecraft joke. Minecraft? The Minecraft joke book. What happened to the noob who walked up to a creeper? <laughs> God, I just love how many punchlines are he was destroyed. It's so dumb! Oh! <laughs> it's the best joke book ever. You guys just don't get it, it's man. You just gotta fill the pages somehow. Whoosh, whoosh. The dice fly all over the table. Alora. Yeah. The bright light shines in, and you hear the sounds of incantations, putting you on high alert. What do you do? I hear incantations. Uh, what do I do? Uh, smell the magic. That's a. Uh, I guess. I I can kind of see a shining child, but it's brighter hell out there, right? Yeah, if you want to go out there, like, if you go any further, you're going to have to roll a fort safe to avoid becoming blinded. Alright. But, like, from my ankle, it says, like, I could see... Like... You can definitely tell where the origins of the light sources are, yes. Alright. Uh... Friggin... I don't know what's going on, so I'm just going to hit him with the... Fourth level... All three action, concordant choir. That's good. Uh, okay. Yeah, I like it. here. Wah, 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 wah. Man, I love that this button works again. Oh, always rolling good on this saves. Double sixteen, baby. I think, guys, if they had a lot of eyes, you my roll is. Wing. Look at all those ones. <laughs> the one four though. That's the one high roll. They take an ouchie. Uh mm, mm. I guess this is like a loud pop, so like, bong. 
No, there's something that happens to the big pile of garbage in the center. Uh, which is to say that the, 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 the pile explodes. Cool. However, I think only this guy is in, within 10 feet. Yeah, this guy and this guy in 10 feet reach it. Everyone else is safe, so... Aha! You, you detonate the pile of furniture. And <laughs> they do not make their saves. And they are hit with a whole bunch of, like, random wooden splinters, debris, and assorted goodness. So that's where the damage goes. Jesus, Alora, why don't you use this spell more often? Exploding <laughs> furniture? Oh, what? I, I just look at my hands. Splinters and nails and, and like, right in front of Ruby's feet. It's just shrapnel everywhere. Clang off the armor. Clink, clink. Well, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> that was all three actions, so... I love it when a plan comes together? Question mark? Range of 200 feet, 10 foot burst. Let's give it a go. Oh, abracadabra, abracazoo. Wa pow! Wa 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 Going for you! Eh! You who? Ah. Okay, so he just has no idea what's going on. <laughs> there's, a, there's a vibrant patting and ping in front of your friends. Uh oh. Well, I, I'm okay, but Jeebus. You, you are. <laughs> Blinded. Your eyes, you can't see anything without your eyes. That's how eyes work. They are the sight sensory organ. The right, creature. Can they still do the uh, save to recover from blinded? Or... Yeah, they can leave the pattern and try again later. On, on the plus side, this means they don't have to worry about the blinding aura. <laughs> no, they're taking that one to care of. Don't have to worry about getting blinded if you can't see. Lederick charges in, almost immediately realizes just how blind this thing this place is. Whoa! My eyes. I can't see anything without my eyes. Luckily, he's very good at seeing without his eyes. The light reflecting off his pecs is enough to obliterate <laughs> a small child in the distance. <laughs> Don't do it, Lederick. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's basically fine for now. Uh, is, does this aura have bolster? Does, does you become... Temporary move for 24 hours. Lederick is so used to his own shining ego <laughs> that he bravely... Shining his teeth. Oh, watch out. If those teeth get you, you, you you'll feel it. That's a, a one hell of a blow. Pa pow Be gone, foul creatures. Ruby, you can't see, but you hear Lederick swing his blade in the air. Uh, Garlic, I'm gonna need a hand. I don't think we all just squeeze against the wall as garlic. <laughs> Everyone is temporarily yeah. flattened by garlic walking over them. Yeah, I just jump onto garlic's back. You're gonna have to beat my eyes, bud. Uh, garlic also has to make that save. Ah yes. Uh, where? He's fine. Okay, I was gonna joke if garlic got blind, so <laughs> I can never thought Ruby again. <laughs> we just run off into the forest. <laughs> I'll have Garlic have two actions, from including that one first one to run forward. I use one to get on his back, and then because I have quick mount, I can use that as his second one to have him guide me. You've cool. seen I Garlic. Yeah. For you, what do you I... do? Okay, hmm? so that one's right in front of me. I can see that one. Yes, which is why you have to make the fort safe. I do have to make a fort safe. Thank God I'm okay at these. Why did I say that? <laughs> Knock on wood. I, I, got, I, I, I think this might be a, a good time to spend uh, one of those heroic yeah, points. Yeah, this is where I'm using one of those heroic Because this thing will permanently blind you otherwise. Oh uh, yeah, probably a good idea. Squint harder! Because we're using the alt rules, it's just a success. Yep. Yeah. Thank God. So, I'm gonna hunt it. And then, do I have any arrows that'd be good here? Man, Garlic looks weird on this bright cyan light. Although, to be yeah. fair, Lederick is so shiny. Yeah, you can barely see him. <laughs> That's what you get when you oil up. <laughs> Sadly, this wouldn't be the kind of thing I'd know anything about, because I don't really know much about astral planar thingies. 
So I'm a shoot it. Yeah, they're actually they're occultism. Gimhek. Do I have occultism? Nope, I am untrained. So yeah, I'm gonna take take my shots. Nope. Yes. Hit. Hit. That's too far. Wow. <laughs> Creatures in pain as it's not just covered in many wounds that cause its bleeding blood, its glowing blood, to come out, but it's also now covered in two arrows. Great. Magical incantation, go! Let's teach you guys a lesson about splitting the party. Wall of force. Abracadabra, abracazoo, three action casting time, but it'll get rid of you! And wait, uh, dang it, Dizzy's blinded so she can't do attack or affinity. Uh, well, that doesn't technically prohibit her from making them. She just, I mean, she can hear the spell casting probably yeah, happening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Assumedly, it has a. Also, we've got Lederick. Let's not forget, he too knows what he's doing. Yeah. He gets two of them, actually. Gosh, what a hero. Anyway, you, you hear him, you just have to worry about mischance. Yeah, what's the mischance? It's... 50% if you're blinded. Well, it's definitely not going to hit. <laughs> you swing and you miss. Ledric, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you... Unfortunately, <laughs> two allies cannot see him. <laughs> wait, wait. Garlic counts, right? Garlic, garlic can admire him. Yeah. Garlic's intelligent enough to understand when things are cool. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I can see him. Uh, yeah, but the, prob but the problem is that Ruby is blinded. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but if he uh, got a critical off on a uh, attack or you know, spell casting, doesn't that prevent the spell? Exactly. Thank yeah. you for reminding me that's how that works. <laughs> doesn't come up very often, because usually it's just Ruby beating the shit out of people. Usually yeah, they don't I survive. <laughs> <laughs> usually that they... also prevents the spell if they're dead. <laughs> Alora, you're standing inside of a swirling pattern. You should probably get out of there. I should. It's either backward or forward. Uh, guess we're going forward. Yeah. And, well, I assume that like rubble isn't still... here anymore. So. Yeah, the rubble's just all over the place now. Yeah. But I can't edit the map. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, while I'm here, let's, uh, they, they look like Queenie, so probably a big spell might be a waste. They they look very injured, yes, if you look there. Yeah. Yeah, we've done a lot of damage already. So I'm just going to hit him with all faithful, which I don't think will do... Actually, I'm, I'm going to use a cult to see if it'll do anything. Yeah, to find probably... Don't forget that Recall Knowledge uses an action. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, then I can't cast, because I moved. Yeah. Uh, then the I'll... Yeah, I'll just take the game. Because, I mean, I'll learn anyway. Goodness, go! Or are you using Chaotic? Uh, probably good. That's, that's my go-to. Then that hits, and it hits. Hey. They aren't weak to it. They're not demons. They're not, like, anathematically opposed to goodness. But they are naughty boys. Doing crimes. Furn crimes. <laughs> Furniture crimes. <laughs> Stacking furniture and putting explosives on them is a very big crime. They ruined that sofa. Out of raw frustration. A powerful globe of searing sunlight explodes in the area. I like that. I think I'm going to show you what Sunburst looks like. Oh my oh god. No. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, that's massive! Yeah, yeah it's Sunburst! Atomic yeah, bomb! It's a level 7 spell. <laughs> Lederick is, haha, what I did once, I can do again. And he does. God Holy damn it. Holy shit, Lederick. <laughs> oh, okay, okay so you may have been completely worthless in the first encounter. But now. <laughs> so he stopped one, and then murdered the other. <laughs> there shall be no spells near Lederick. Fight me, mano a mano, and he's... Gets a little too caught up in his ego. And now it's his turn again. 
Which is to say that he quite literally wastes one of his actions just being like, ah. He's posing for nobody. Stand down now, glowing child. The glowing child's like, oh, fuck, this guy's tough shit. <laughs> the glowing child, which almost got cut in half and saw its ring get cut in half, is like, um... <laughs> This might be a good offer. Nah, uh, perhaps sure. I should do you that the thing over there is really cool. Finally, Lederick underperforms. Except he rolls really good on the dice. <laughs> Ruby. The sounds of someone getting cut to pieces all around you. <laughs> you hear oh, it go, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Lederick, the opposite of <laughs> fucking solace. Now I kill the boss. I'm giving you the actions here. You can see. I can't. Chomp this idiot. Oh god, he has that thing that I always like to complain about. Oh yeah. Whenever someone fails, critically fails a strike, he gets to quack him. Yeah. Or disarm him. If only you had a swashbuckler. <laughs> garlic go! Garlic hits! Garlic get him! Garlic crunch! The light fades from the creature. As it is bitten, thanks to Loderick's intimidating stance. Such was easy to do. It doesn't crunch, though. These things are made of astral goo, so they probably don't have a lot of bones. And, like, e even though it's, like, daytime, it's still, like, going into, like, a dark room after going to the sunlight. It's like, oh, it's so dark. Anyway, Ruby becomes, uh, gain regains their sight after a bit, I assume. Are the enemies gone? Oh, <laughs> Lederick has a sword, the tip of a sword is poked in the dirt as he stands chest forward. And Solace and Lederick both hold their weight in certain, certain situations. Yeah, it's a coin flip with these guys. Either they are the best, either they are MVP or they need to be saved the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it has, it has a little unpredictability. The Laura cast yeah. eye drops on herself. Oh. <laughs> Got those dry eyes. Do you have dry eyes? Try clear eye. Hmm. Does that anything of note in this courtyard? Uh, there should well, be. I mean, there's exploded furniture. Uh, among the furniture, you will find a particular item. Which I thought I had put down as loot, but apparently forgot to. No. It is something known as an Eye of Fortune. Oh. What is this Eye of Fortune? Here you go. Also, thank God Ruby didn't get blinded as bad as Torvis fell. <laughs> you know, as Claire. What? Remember Torvis? Oh, yeah. Uh, she lost an eye in one battle, and then she got blinded in the other, like... Oh, she could have used that before. It's <laughs> <laughs> been handy, but... Well, that's the definition of the term. Irony. Can't get an uh -huh. irony. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh, oh, oh oof. Patch. I thought it was an eye. <laughs> Welcome to iCarly, the episode Eye Patch. Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho, tee hee hee. Welcome to the one weird episode of iCarly where they almost started a nuclear war. Who hasn't? That was an actual episode. No, who hasn't started a nuclear war? We've got to stumble into it. I'm going to be seeing dots for a minute. You're telling me. <laughs> His person who is actually seeing only dots. Yeah. Yeah, that door was locked. I assume the other. Oh yeah, the one gambling hall at the end is empty. Not empty, locked, closed. Words. I'm good at them. Um, that door does indeed have a, an element of barredness to it. There are voices on the what? other side that begin to mutter when you push against it. In what language? 
Uh, if I recall correctly, it's Sylvan. Oh, I understand. Although, yeah, they can also speak common, but Sylvan's what they're going with. Why would they speak common when they're, like, <laughs> enemies probably only speak Hey, Italians, that. if you're gonna scour and mutter in fear, the least you could do is do it in English for me. <laughs> Mooks these days, they got no respect. Hire a subtitler. <laughs> a subtitler for life. I'm pretty sure it's called an interpreter, Dizzy. <laughs> I've got, like, the person who, like, writes the subtitles, not the translates. So that sounds like there's a people in the door. At least behind it. Yep. What are they saying? Uh, stop immediately. The panic mutterings of uh, people that are not, uh, you know, frightened, worried, concerned, as one might be if they were, say, under attack by all the scary things around here. Like, do they sound like they're presently attacked, or like they're just scared? They're scared of the fact that there's someone outside the door. Uh, okay. Uh, this might be the parents. Just connecting the dots. Hey, if you guys are, like, not the people attacking this place, knock on the door twice. There's some muttering, and then it's quiet, and then you eventually hear, like, a... They only did it once. They... Yeah, that was Why wouldn't they lie? No, they did twice. Sorry. Sorry if you didn't oh, hear, yeah. but they did twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about to get That's really just confusing. <laughs> Okay, well, I never expected them to be honest. <laughs> We're here to rescue things. We fought a bunch of Zolgath. We're good. We're the good guys. Explosive children things. Exploding a light yeah. child. Yeah, that was like exploding light children that we stabbed a whole lot. Or a bunch of little kids out front. We like stopped them from getting eaten. We're the good guys. Hey, we're the good guys. Uh, delightful. So, if you could slightly unbar this door, we can help you get to the exit. The door is unbarred, and you are presented with several frog-looking people wearing some rather fancy-looking clothes. Mm. Although their art makes them look like they're uncomfortable inside of it. That one's named Frank. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> hey, it's me, Frig Bugger the Hutch. I'm Bruggadesh. Yeah, this is my cool friend, lazy, cool. ecocentric, and frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> the la 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 croak, and would like to know why the individuals have decided to make it their their business saving people who don't even live here. It, it comes with the territory for some reason. Gosh. Well, they'll give you the deets that they know. They were summoned here by some idiot who didn't know what he was doing. And before they could get stent back, uh, a bunch of people attacked. Some had a lot of arms, others were just very tough fighting kind of folk. Who knew what they were doing. There was also this giant rock and a bunch of faceless people with massive cleaver axes. They threw all the humans in the stables. They heard a bunch of screaming, then it was silent, and since they've been kind of hiding out, hoping for this to blow over. That's unfortunate. Almost certainly. What's more unfortunate is that their boss is located on the, on the, inside the theater, which is, uh, the room adjacent. And they're, uh. they're, they're, and some other important people are located upstairs. Where they've been hearing lots of noises. Uh, you've not actually been in that section of the building, so the sounds of the above stairs noise have kind of blended into the general kerfuffles around the place. It's a noisy building. Yep. But yeah, if you guys want to head down the hallway to the entrance, it should be clear out front. Yeah. You guys can take cover there with <clears> the <throat> various kids. Yeah, well, well see them out to like. Yeah, the the main lobby. As they leave, then we'll just yeah, go back just... to it. 
Hmm. I'm not sure it's actually clear. Yeah. Well, there's one section of people saved. Continue moving on around. We can Anything go to the. Uh, hmm? Yeah. We can go to the theater. Yeah. Well, the door to the theater was locked. Locked. So unless chances are we gotta find another entrance. Da -da 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 Super. First. Stupid food. New super chef. Super chef. Soup or chef. <laughs> short break to watch this guy. Oh god, that meat exploded. Yeah, I, I had to share that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Vaporized. That meat goes kaboom. Alright, moving on. Yeah, I was gonna ask, is there anything of note about this door? Uh, well, the door itself is completely unremarkable, but hearing and listening beyond it, um, you hear the distant sounds of, like, arguments. Not in Sylvan, though. More more gruff voices. Turn to Fuyi, like, reaching clear? Guess we're doing this again. Yep. Clear my targeting queue. Also, before we go, Lederick, do you, do you want a healing potion? Because you look kind of beat up. I'm fine. How about some of you take some damage? <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best, Chief. No. Kick the door open. You see a bunkhouse and some dirt paths that lead around the corner. Oh. Well, it's, it's a little less impressive than I was expecting. Peeking around the corner. I'll move over there soon. Peeking around the corner, you can see a bunch of Zolgath, a stairs going up to some sort of second floor that only extends over half the building, and a large creature that um, Alora could easily identify as a Gug. Uh-oh. Uh, I mean, Gugs are dangerous if you're, like, level 10, but you're level 14. These guys are chumps to you. Fair enough. They are... There is a problem. They are pretty dangerous if they can get to the right position because they have lots of claws and, uh, you know... They they're still pretty sharp. Yeah. Also, they're notorious for being able to fit in unusual spaces. Where did that <laughs> that boy go? He's sneaking out behind the buildings to get a different angle. Well, sight lines are mostly broken, so it's a very easy sneak to do. Yeah. Well, I'm a little more straightforward than that. Do the do the. All right, wanna go? You wanna go? Wanna go to town? Wanna go to? <laughs> wanna go to Clown Town? I'm hunting these two guys. Well, logically, you would have your aim more than ready by the time the fight actually starts. Yes. Who you go? You have your hunter target and you're ready to fire. Okay. I'm going to use hunter's aim. Give myself a bonus. And I'm going to shoot the hard scale with a storm arrow. <gasps> this big tough guy. So oh. Yeah, I hope he's tough. I like that I make the roll storm arrow. Cool. I'll just double it. Now give me that damage. Oh, how does Storm Arrow work? Okay, I will tell you right now. I have it over. Uh, Storm Arrow. Uh, it hits him with lightning. Uh, 3d12 electrical damage, and they have to do a DC 25 saving throw. Reflex. So, it's just gonna rewind that. I really love that it's like... They, they take damage, and then you make a saving throw, and then that saving throw modifies the damage. Like, thanks for throwing me off, Paizo. Great. And they could succeed. Of course they do. <laughs> well, it's like a little... 25. 
We'll, we'll, we'll keep the damage. It still does like normal damage, right? Yep. Which is that much Long. damage. Well, it gets the wind knocked out of him, and he's stuck on the on the the the, the staircase. And then I still get two more shots. <laughs> yep. Nope. And... Nope. Okay, so I got the one good shot, though. You got the Stop. one good shot, though. We'll get that out of here. I'm done. Paul Bunyan. Was well, 35 speed, because he's some weird... Oh, no, it's 25. I just read it wrong. I'm dumb. Good old Banyan runs in. Oh, he has sudden charge. So he, he, even if it was more further away, he could just woo in there. Anyway, he'll, he'll take a just parrying stance. Ha-ha. Ho-ho. Banyan. Paul Bunyan. Banyan. Whoops. Across the Paul Bunyan verse. Whoosh, whoosh. You think you are any chance for my most powerful technique, the Bunyan Blast? No, don't hit yourself, Bunyan. <laughs> it just freaking explodes. Bunyan blasted himself. Well, it's time we all remind ourselves what is Shield Warden? Arch goes to Shield Rest because you shield block as a Oh, they can do it for friends. Powerful stench. That's cool. They're very smelly. Poor Bunyan, he's about to get a big smelly. Uh, with a shove tray, that's cute. God, these guys have a lot going on for them. Well, time to raise that shield and make their way down. Bip. However, Paul Bunyan has the perfect defense. Ha <laughs> ha! Like how he has a different name, but he's just Paul Bunyan. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, they knew what they were doing. You, you know that I'm going to call the, the final boss and the ruby fists. I'm going to call him Kefka. You know I gotta. <laughs> These guys get just taken over chaos. And then he's going to have a re super realistic Kefka laugh. Just like in the video games. Unfortunately, the clock strikes for thee, Paul Bunyan. Ah! The attention's mostly on the guy who, like, ran forwards, except for this guy who's like, oh, what the heck? Okay, I got gr grit disjoint. Why is he not on the grid? I got grit disjointment <laughs> fever, sorry. There we go. Get well soon. <laughs> Shut up. He comes charging at you in raw anger and passion and bangs against your armor. Unfortunately, Gugs are more effective when they have lots of people to fight, instead of just one guy to fight. But they do have very long arms. What is Rend? Uh, what is it again? They hit him with two consecutive strikes, the list of type in the same round. Cool. Let's fuck up Bunyan. Fucking up Bunyan. Why was the first one... Oh, that's control click, gotcha. Well, he's hit twice, damage and critical. And then he has to suffer a Rend. Delightful. Bunyan, you fool, you're going to die and lose subscriber. Should have taken a healing potion. Uh, I don't know how much that would realistically have helped him. Well, this guy can move over a little, a little closer and just shoot, shoot a bile jet or two at you. That one's for you, Ruby. This one's for Alora. Ruby, go! See? I took damage. I can take damage. <laughs> You took stamina damage. <laughs> I can get her too, Bunyan. Alright, I'm giving Garlic two actions. His first one is going to be intimidate the dude in front. Because he's a bully now. This is his job. It's a big meanie. Diddle dun dun. Then. What's his, uh. Okay, cool. Eh, 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 eh. Barrel. No. Can't barrel fast. I'll <laughs> hit him on my turn then. For me, I'll smack this guy with a big old power attack. Oh! Yeah. Hit. 
but a firm and powerful blow. Kapow! Man, garlic can carry us both past him. You learn an unfortunate. Oh no, these guys don't have tax for Tony. I'm thinking of the gug. <laughs> Idiot. No, I can't even hit him. Laura, go. Actually, I've got to go to the bathroom real fast. Woo. Go. Go, go, go. I love how, like, magic arrow items, if they aren't just does extra damage on contact, they just suck. <laughs> yeah, because you gotta go a whole second thingamajig and... And then they it. always have, like, AC 12. Yeah. Like, those storm arrows cost a lot, too. You'd think they'd scale. But No. Because anything worth using them on is going to just avoid all the damage. I do have two of one extremely useful arrow, though. But they were expensive, so I only got two. I got these. <laughs> you can't shoot down a star, you dumb archer. Yes, I can. <laughs> Especially this one, which has no range penalties if I can detect a target myself. I hit the target. Like, you let go of the arrow, and the arrow is in the person. <laughs> yeah. It's a, you've already been stabbed type situation. Yeah. Like, if, if we somehow find a telescope, and I look through the telescope at somebody, and then I fire the arrow, it just hits them. They're very expensive. There was also one I considered, but it was even more expensive. Resonating arrows. Resonant arrow. Bleh. When you when you hit someone Bleh. with it, it does so, uh, 5d10 sonic damage to every creature within 10 feet. But it's uh, twenty. It's only a 28 basic fortitude save. Yeah, that sucks. And they cost 1,500 gold each. The fuck. See, this is why I want to have magic items scale according to the player's uh, class DC, if, if possible. Yeah, they should, say. because otherwise, like, any time most magic items are useful, would be useful, just the enemies can ignore them. Hmm. All Anyways, right. who's up? Go, go, Alora. Alora. Oh, my noise. Oh, there's a Garuda. Oh, no, the Snoot. Wait, what? She just summoned Anorak. Ah. Also, Bella, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Dummy. Oh, no. I was muted. I was trying to... Dummy. No. Idiot. Anyway. Yeah, got him. It's not with the Anorak, and I assume I get their two actions. Right? Uh, well, yeah. I presume it gets all of its actions right away, because otherwise it spells fucking terrible. Right. And then I'm just gonna... Have them... Can I have them appear, like, in the air? Like, actually already flying? It can be anywhere within 30 feet you want. Yeah. 
they're gonna be uh, a little empty. Let me check the ruler to see if I was actually within 30 feet. Okay, I have to move a little. You can't move. The the spell is three actions. Yeah, no, I have to move them a little because they're actually. Oh, there's another one over there already. Gotcha. All right. Then I get to use their two actions, which I'll use to swooping dive. Flies up to their speed and straight line. Does that at least two feet? Okay. Well, they can move 60 feet when flying, so go for it. So, same MAP, or? There is no MAP. Uh, well, I mean, the MAP to the strikes is as usual, but... Okay. What up, Birdman? Who are you attacking? Uh, attacking, uh, the hard scale. Okay, you gotta move the token closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, um, give me that hit. Bow. Hey, that's another one. Hey. Yeah. The big one. Kapow. He sees he wishes to destroy something of his equivalent. I, I think. Let's see. Level 7. It's your highest level slot, right? Yeah. Okay. I think I might just change summon spells. Have him summon something two levels higher, because the way it works right now, it just seems like... It's not bad, but it ain't good. Let's put it like that. It's not worth three actions, and then an action every turn to get, you know... Um... Compared to companions and everything. Um... Zolgath. Shoot some bile at him. Be gone! Burb, no. Burb gets hit with lots of acid. But he can take a little more than that. For you. Okay. Guess I'm killing this hard scale. He is fairly spooked. Oh, I'm going to spook him more. Like this. But a bam. Okay. <laughs> I still missed, even though I technically <laughs> didn't. Uh, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit him. Oh, hero point. Yep, my last hero point. Marvelous. And then hunted shot. Seriously? The dice love you. Dude, that's a hero point. Getting them refunded. Paul Bunyan. And damage. Ha ha ho ho. Oh god, I'm dying. Ah, <laughs> uh, there is only heroics in death. Oh, yes, Juggernaut. I need to remember he has that. Hmm. Begotten, foul creatures. Taste my steel. Taste it. Yum, yum. What hope do you have but the hope of death at my hand? That was good for a 66 roll. Fight me again, and I'll show you what I can do. Ha <laughs> ha! He gets a little too fancy. The heart skill takes a step away. That's it. Puts a shield up. Oh, I forgot about the powerful stench that this poor old boy has to put up with. Let me let me give him a fort safe. Here you go. He's good. He's good. There's a Garuda to have to do. We'll get to them when we get to them. Eh, what's it gonna do? Is shield up? Let's just, just just give him the old bunk. Bunk. Bunk bunk. Yeah. So this Pi Path Pathfinder Paizo, what the fuck is this here? Why is this here? Is a great question that I want an answer to because I 
if you want to give him a, new, a different weapon, I guess. But from a pure AP perspective, this is completely meaningless. It's already included. So who, who fucking cares? Maybe Jim is like, oh, what, what is the stats? I mean, I've done that before in my life. I know. But monsters are not players. They don't need excuses for having different stats. This creature will try desperately to claw Lederick. But his AC is too high. Hard skill feels his life waning. But before he goes, the least he can do is go for the person who got him. Could you uh, take care of that, Dizzy? Yeah, I got it. No! <laughs> even a shield cannot protect him. <laughs> I like to imagine Fuyu didn't even look worried. It's just like... <laughs> With a large <laughs> hand, he reaches over and grabs the bird. No. And then yeah, he just kind of sweeps a little old letter. Who dodges deftly. Yeah, man. I know. I know. This is why I'm like, bump up the level. Because everything here is level 10. And that's a level 9 creature. The Zalgath. With his fine gut, it's going to give you a little spritz. How about some more spritzes? For you, I Ruby. Guess, guess Acid. That's a range attack. Didn't you just make attack for Tundi, or do you have a second one already? I have a second one. Uh oh. Well, that's on me. Well, give him the give him the damage. Show him show him my mistake. That was the wrong button. <laughs> I appreciate that you want to. That was the right button. Well, it's your, your turn, so you get them all back. <laughs> you just, like, punch them through space. <laughs> your fucking JoJo character. Alright. First off, I'm going to knock down this guy in front. So I can run over him. On the ground. Ba-boom! Double crit, technically, since you hit him by 20. Nice! I might, nice. just, I might just make that a thing. How about we just make that a thing? Like, that's really only going to happen once a balloon. We might as well make it... <laughs> super crits. I love super crits. He's also prone on the ground. You, you you just... Your glaive descends on him, and he just flattens into the ground. <laughs> and I think when you crit fail or trip, you take damage. 1d6. 2d6, I guess. Oh, 1d6. 1d8 because of knockdown. Incredible. So let's me use my glaives dice. It is still. And I'll give garlic two actions. One of them is to move over. I guess. Come on. I'll use Wazda. That's uh. Can't tell if it's lagging or. Even that's not working. Where do you want to be? Please. I wanted to be there. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm having I'm having I'm having grid disjointment again. No. Some weird stuff happening. I'm sorry. Well Valley, you're probably gonna be the one killing that soul gas on the ground. <laughs> and then for Garlic's second action he can uh intimidate the uh eh, the hard scale is probably the smart idea. I'm uh, not yet. Yeah. Alright. That doesn't matter anyway. Nope. Alora. So is sustaining part of the uh, action I use to command? I think so. Okay, then uh, I'll have the Gruda fly back and up 30 He's feet. He's still grabbed by a big gug. Oh, right. Damn. Well, I guess you have to escape that. What's that? The athletics? Yes. Oh, or an arm strike if you want to. Uh, His beak and talent attacks might do a bit better. Yeah. All right. Well, it's that. acrobatics is the same. Gotcha. Cool. The DC, however, is a ridiculous 33. Damn. I'm, at, I'm actually just going to hear a point just so he succeeds at that. Well, then he's free! And then he flies back and up 30 feet, so he's, his turn is just kind of wasted. 
pretty much. Uh, Alora, as they have their two actions, is just gonna lance uh, Zolgath on the ground. Yeah, lance. No. Oh, we're getting a lot of hero points today. <laughs> <laughs> This guy runs up to Ruby with the intention of jumping on your face. Oh no, my face. Uh, you do get attack of opportunity on him, because he does stride in there. Man. Get him. Ayana. Ow. He's latched. Oh, Ruby is terrifying. He's <laughs> latched onto you and begins gnawing at your face, which that hits, actually. Here you go. Fool you. Okay. Because my formerly hunted target is dead, I'm going to hunt uh, the hard scale here mm -hmm. and the gut rager that's attacking uh, Paul Bunyan. So first, I'm going to shoot at the hard scale. Zoinks! You can teach one of your Pokemon a move if you give me a hard scale. <laughs> no. And then I'm going to use Hunted Shot on the one going for Paul Bunyan. So I can hopefully kill that for him. Hit. Okay, got a hit. Oh, oh. Lederick finds no excuse as he steps off to the side and throws his sword at the at the guy. Well, he ain't gonna make it. Lederick has too much base damage for that. Let me just, let me just, let me just, let's just, 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 let's just enjoy the moment. Blit, gone, dead. Then he turns his attention to the other guy. And how about you? Ah, my friends are watching. I feel so invigorated to kill. Seeing an easy target, he goes for Ruby. After raising his shield, of course. Ruby, watch out! Ruby, watch out! Ruby, watch out hard. Ow. Why does this oh, Warhammer do piercing damage? I don't know! <laughs> because there's a spike on Warhammers. Ah. Using the back end. Lugog sees Lederick on his last legs and reaches forward with his big meaty hand. No! Lederick is lifted off the ground. <coughs> lifted close to the jaws. Wait, that's with MAP. Lederick's armor class, however, is too high. No, wait. Even with a plus two, he gets bitten. Chomp. Chomp. How disgusting. This creature on the ground explodes! They have a thing called detonate. Where they go kaboom. Oh, oh okay. Oh wait, Ruby is in range. Yeah, twenty feet. Ruby is in range. Kaboom! So is that other guy, Ranger. <laughs> Good on him. Okay. Both take half. Nice, Ruby. Uh, which one has me grabbed? The Gut Rager? Yeah. Jumped on your face. Right. Glomped, in, okay. if one might say. I'll kill him first. Just uh, because he's eager first... doesn't mean you have to be. First I'll give one action to Garlic and he can fire cone all three of these idiots. Oh no! A fiery cone begins to... Well, be careful that you don't set the whole place on fire. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Reflex spell DC, gotcha. What is your DC, anyway? 33. A wow wow. Alright, so the guy who's holding on to you gets a face full of it. And the other two just, just take normal damage. How lovely for him. Alora. And then... <laughs> Oh yeah, you have more. I'm only, 
I've only mm. used one action. Come on. Oh, no, 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 no. That's two, two. Yeah. I'm gonna smack the gut rager. <laughs> Unhand me. Yes, do it again. I expected him to be dead. He is glomped on too tightly. Wow. It's crisping me. Alora. Alora's turn. Alright. I grew it, huh? Uh what does an at will spell do? Like what does that mean? What? Right. Like they have true strike at will. As opposed to everything else. They can do it when they want to. That means that any time they want to, they can cast True Strike. Okay, so it it's doesn't like cost any slots. It. They just use it. Okay. And yeah, he's 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 just gonna cast True Strike on you know his bow and just go for that Zolga. Cool. Uh, yeah. When you roll the attack roll, don't forget to click for Fortune. Uh, what button's that? Oh, when you click it, there'll be a fortune option. Yeah, the, it shows up a little right. pop-up menu, and there's the button for fortune or misfortune. You want a fortune? Yeah, yeah, in the bottom left. Whoops. Pew. All right. Well. See, that's great. Are, are you hitting this guy or that guy? My things are stopped. Don't read you the hard scale. Well, the hard scale takes normal. He's a little too tough to get a, a thirty-two. He needs a twenty for that one. Like I said. The level difference is a bit... Mm. Alright, Bella, roll me the, the damage. Let's see it. Bye, Bella. Bella, no. Bella, no. Bella died. She did. She is Awful. dead. Well, we can still resolve this guy who's still eating. Good old Ruby. Ruby, watch out. They're doing a good job at it. <laughs> Being actually competent for once. So yeah, we'll get to Alora when we get to Alora for you. Well, the good thing is they're next to each other. I'm gonna shoot that means. the gut, the hard scale through the gut rager. In theory. Let him have it. Hey, this is a double crit. In truth, <laughs> both of them. Both of them. A twofer. Letter returns. Wait, wait. Mm -hmm. I have another action. Mm, use it. I will use my last action to shoot. That thing. Da -da 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 -da. I can't do much damage because it's not my hundred target. Penetrating shot counts as two attacks, so it's actually minus ten, but it still hits. I still hit. <laughs> Lederick turns into a flurry of blades. Ah, Bella. Bella, 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 Bella. Bella, I double killed. <laughs> yeah. Did uh, I crit roll? Yeah. Ah, uh, no, you, you normal succeeded. Well, it's, he's gone now anyway. Okay. Anyway, that means one, two, three, and then ninety-six extra. Flurry of blades. The gug is reduced to barely anything. But who will go first? <laughs> you foul fiend, you think you have a chance against Lederick? Oh, yeah! Uh, the gug actually has a good time to use this now, because there's a bunch of people around, so let's use it. And then I'll bite Lederick. So he goes for... Here we go. Ruby, garlic, Lederick. Ow. Hey, Ruby, stop. Ruby, it. Lederick. Lederick is down and out for the count. I'm nearly down and out for the count. Jesus, no. you have like 
4 HP. And then he the m four. marches up to you to give you a lesson, Ruby. I mean, he was technically in range. Sure was. Finish. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Cleave him in half. Okay, what happened? Critical. Uh, yeah, I got worry. another attack of opportunity. Delightful oh. 77. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, and with that, the fight's over. Yay. I, I hope you don't mind if I take a minute. Just take a minute and sit right there. I have two moderate healing potions. I could probably give them both. Uh, yeah, Ruby and Paul Bunyan. Oh, I've got a, uh, two moderate healing potions as well, so we can each give one. I mean, yeah. I carry my own. I am a, I am a fighter. This is true. Right. I'm gonna give one of these to Laderick. How about we stop it here for now? Yeah. Oh, we'll see you next time. Stamina break. No, no, the session break, because it's uh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as we end. Yeah. So, Man, Laura, that getting the shit kicked out of you thing really is for nerds. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Meanwhile, the Garuda just like points at the rise and points at Laura, just like, do better. <laughs> Maybe apply some medicine to Lederick. Get him on his legs, then take a stab at a break and give him half back. Also, we have to walk over two bodies that are pinned to each other, so. <laughs> oh, they're cuddling. <laughs> Forever. <gasps> oh. Don't want him to stop being dead. There you go. Because he's an NPC, he gets automatically dead it. <laughs> Even though it's not applicable. Next time, can our heroes free this place of its naughtiness? How easy will the siege be to resolve, given how these Zogaths seem to be barely a threat at all, unless they turn into murder houses out of nowhere? <laughs> yeah, they do occasionally just start beating the crap out of Ruby. It really does depend. Well, next time, I'm sure you're going to clean this place up and get that sweet level 15. Can you imagine? Ability score increases happen. The big one. <laughs> one of the big ones. One of the big boys. One of the big pants. Let's yeah, holy crap, I get a lot. Let's see. Let's just, just... Boost, general feat, greater weapon specialization, improved evasion, incredible senses, and skill increase. All I know is I get 8th level spells right now. Well, My perception right? becomes legendary. Oh, uh, no. My reflexes become legendary. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, at fifth level, I get eighth level. Fifteen, I get eighth level. Yeah. But I'm with Bye bye. Yeah. It was fun. See Go you level. Saturday for the things, Ava. For figuring out whatever it is we're doing. Oh, I've already prepared a bunch. Ah, bye bye. Ah, bye bye. Bye bye. Puts my peppy paws. Bye bye. Bye bye. Paw damage. Very dangerous. Very lethal. No. Yeah. Especially for... This was fun. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. But yeah, we're going to figure out... I'm going to think about how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to buff up that summon spell a little. Yeah. I mean, I guess since he can, you know, give him self-advantage every turn... Which yeah, is but... A it's it's not as good as it sounds because he needs a 20 to hit things most of the time and since that's kind of what he does in his levels that low what you should also consider is you have to sustain every turn which means you either are already in place to cast a spell or you move and do something else like you your spell casting gets real messed up when you always have to sustain something oh yeah but it also gives you the uh like the the Gerudo w would be attacking on the turn so it's not like you're wasting attack yeah but it's not uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Bob, 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 bob.